2016. This is interviews, music reviews, opinions, and more. This is, this is The Hotter Show. What is up, everybody? We are one out of you here today on episode 284 of The Hotter Show. I hope you guys are doing absolutely fantastic. Thank you so very much for turning and clicking that play button on today's episode of the podcast. A little bit of a uh, kind of a return to form here on The Hotter Show with just the the audio-only episode of the podcast here. And uh, it's kind of cool. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm liking just having the audio thing happening right now. Here, I'm not gonna lie. It's only been a, a handful of episodes I've done that weren't audio only. But after doing so many of them on video, it's just different for me. I still really enjoy doing the video and stuff like that. Obviously, that's not gonna stop or anything. But just, it's cool, kind of going back to the, uh, back to where we began here on the hard show with the audio only. And we got a really fun episode for you here today as I am jumping into the world of the Ask Hotter Anything again here on, for the third time I'm doing this Ask Hotter Anything, which is the new format of the Q&A. And I have some really, really good questions, definitely some questions I never have answered before, definitely some questions I've never gotten into before. So you guys are going to very much enjoy this episode here today on the Hotter Show. And I want to give a big shout out to everyone who supported last week's episode of the show, my chat with Luke and Tim from Roan Mountain Choir. That was a badass chat. A couple people hit me up and they're like, man, like you could just, you can tell how much fun you guys had just basically getting to know each other and hanging out. And the funniest part of the episode was the fact that there was probably almost an hour before and after the episode in total that we just like kind of shot the shit. And I was like, man, I should have just recorded that whole thing and put it up. The episode would have been like three hours long, but it uh, would have been three hours of just great content. So I think uh, I think either way you guys would have enjoyed it. But big shouts again to Tim and Luke from Roan Mountain Choir. Thank you guys very much for coming on the show and uh, being such great guests. Be sure to go check them out. And I, of course, before we jump into the main part of the episode here today, want to give a massive shout out. To the company that helps keep my beard feeling and looking so fantastic, mean beard. If you have a beard, or you know someone with a beard, and either you or that person are in need of some beard care, maybe they got an itchy beard, or they got some beard dandruff happening, they need to go on meanbeardco.com right now and check out the meanest beard care products in the world. We've got some oils for them. We got some balm for them. The oil, of course, helps with the nourishment of the beard and the skin underneath, as well as has a fantastic scent. There's five different scents for you to choose from. Me, personally, I love the gun smoke. That is my favorite. Even though I love them all, I really love the gun smoke, though. We, of course, as well, have the bombs, which help with protecting your beard, as well as kind of helping to uh, give it a little bit of shape and style if you've got some you know, craziness going on. And then we have the Mean Whip, which, which let me tell you, the Mean Whip is kind of the best of both worlds. It's awesome. It is, it is my favorite beer care product in the world. I use Mean Whip every day, two times a day. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love the combination of the oil and the Mean Whip person. That's really what I use. And uh, quick pro tip, if you, uh, you take a little bit of the Mean Whip and you put a couple drops of the oil in it and you know, spread that around your beard together. It is, it is just uh, fantastic. On top of all that, they also have some fantastic other uh, products available, like their combs, 100% bamboo, and they uh, they come scented, and they're all branded by hand with the Mean Beard uh, font. I'm actually looking at mine right now, and I love mine, man. It is, uh, it's the best comb because it's 100% bamboo. It actually helps spread the oil around your beard so it is uh, great for that they also have a pocket uh folding comb which is badass and also some cool swag and on top of all that as great as the company is and the product really what mean beard is all about is its community standing with purpose a positive aggressive attitude and you know that whole mean beard mindset of just trying to put positivity out in the world any way that you can in an aggressive way, which is sets it what that means. It's just you're gonna you're gonna instead of being aggressively negative all the time, you're gonna be aggressively positive, put that same energy into being positive. And you know, the Mimi community on Facebook is something that I am currently helping to run 
And uh, man, let me tell you, if you're having a, gra- a bad day and you jump on that meme, your community Facebook group, it uh, it really gives you a boost. Just seeing a lot of really positive stuff. But just the meme, your community in general is so great for that. So on top of the fact they got the best beer care products in the world, they also have the best community in the world. So if you need some beer care products or you may be Watch out the Mean Beard community. Go to meanbeardco.com right now. Check it out. And while you're there, use my code MB15TJH. That is MB15TJH. All uppercase letters. And you'll save yourself a little something at checkout. What's not to like, guys? If you have a beard, you know, someone has a beard and they're in need of some beard care products. If you need some beard care product, check out meanbeardco.com right now. And Always remember, folks, it's not the beard, it's the attitude. And without further ado, we're going to roll in. I have no fancy transitions for this or anything because that's not the kind of episode we're doing here today. It's funny, I almost was like, we're going to roll into my interview with, and I'm like, oh yeah, no interviews today. You're stuck with me, sorry. (laughs) But we have some cool, fun Q&A happening here, and actually it's funny talking about Mean Beard. The first uh, couple of questions I have here are actually from Mean Beard Managing Partner and co-owner, Mr. Joe Loving. And Joe basically booked this episode. He might as well be interviewing me because he he sent me a whole bunch of questions and they are uh, they're, they're some really, really great questions. So I wanted to get to them all. And we have uh, quite a few other questions and uh, I think we're going to have a lot of fun here today. And that this all being said too, if you're listening to this and you're like, man, I have a really fun question or a really silly question I want you to answer on air, send them to me. And worst case scenario, I'll bank them. And then the next time I do one of these, I will uh, I will answer your question and give you a shout out and everything. So be sure to keep that in mind. But the, uh, the first few questions I have from Joe here, so I've split them up. I'm not going to answer them all at once for Joe, but I, he has like eight or nine questions, so I split them up a little bit. But uh, the first few he has are all kind of related to music and then the podcast. So the very first one is, what is your favorite acoustic version solo? Now, this is interesting because both of them are Alice in Chains. There's, there's two I'm stuck between. Because they're both Alice in Chains. They're both from the same performance, which is the MTV Unplugged record, which is still to this day just one of my all-time favorite, uh, if not my favorite, live performance. Uh, especially, Definitely my live, favorite live acoustic performance. That, uh, that record, man, it completely changed my life. Like, just completely changed my life and my outlook on music. I didn't know music could sound like that. And the two songs that really, really did it for me were Nutshell and Angry Chair. And Nut- like Nutshell is my favorite song. It's not just my favorite Alice in Chains song. Nutshell is literally my favorite song. And every time I pick up a guitar, I can't help but play Nutshell, at least for a second. And the guitar solo in Nutshell might be my favorite of all time. I love Cantrell's solo in nutshell it just like it's so expressive it's so beautiful it's so dark and haunting and just yeah man what a spectacular guitar song the acoustic version is really cool as well but man when they are playing the angry chair and Cantrell jumps into that freaking just like because the solo for angry chair is like it's ripping right so i was like how are they gonna pull off that solo and he plays it like completely different and it's kind of cool. I really, really liked the way that he played it. Because it wasn't really what you thought it was going to be. But also, man, there's another one I just thought of too from that same thing. Because I love the brother, uh, the solo from Brother. Which is one of my favorite Alice in Chain songs as well. You know what? Okay. We're just, just going to stop. Go with Nutshell. Nutshell is my favorite guitar uh, acoustic version of a guitar solo. Of all time. It's also my favorite acoustic performance of all time. Is that performance of uh, of Nutshell Man is it is powerful. It is very very powerful. You know, Lane basically knew that his life was probably coming to an end. Not probably, he knew his life was coming to an end. And it's uh, it's really really powerful powerful stuff. So yeah, big shouts to the Nutshell uh, guitar solo. 
I'm very much a big fan of that. His next question here from Joe is, uh, did Gigi Allen take the rock star life too far? Now, I don't know a lot about Gigi Allen. Honestly, I know pretty much nothing about him except for he was the guy that flung shit at people. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh god, I wish I could get away with just flinging shit at people sometimes. Wouldn't that be great? You know, it is what it is, I guess. But uh, you know, you um, anyone who who knows him. And who knew him is just, uh, I don't know. It's, he's such a polarizing figure because like some people love him and they, they understand that he was, you know, he was su just such a polarizing figure. And I mean, I've never been a fan of his music. I've never been a fan of anything he's done. A lot of things he did I saw is really hateful and stuff like that and disgusting and stuff like that and i kind of hate the fact that like people are like oh man like oh that's rock and roll I'm like what no like what the fuck no so i i don't know if he took the rock star life too far or he just took his craziness too far because i think that dude was just not sane from day one so i'm gonna say yes he did but at the same time you know, was he really a rock star? I don't know. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say that he took it all too far. In my opinion, the second you start throwing your shit at people, I mean, come on, let's let's just stop doing that, okay? We're not monkeys, all right? I mean, technically we're primates, I guess, but I, I, that's not the point. Next question from Joe. Favorite. Hair metal band. Now this is funny because my la my first uh, ask hot or anything, I was asked if I liked a certain hair metal band that I never heard of them, and uh, I th I think it was Wasp. I think it was Will, and he asked if I was a fan of Wasp, and I never really heard Wasp that much. So I went back. I went and listened to a bunch of Wasp, and I actually really liked it. And man, it's funny because hair metal is one of those things I never ever ever got into. I never went through that phase of like. Being a classic rock kid, you know? Most people go through that phase. And I just, I never went, I guess you could, I guess you could say that my grunge era was my classic rock era, you know what I mean? Some people would consider that classic rock at the time, but me personally, I, you know, so many kids were like into Led Zeppelin and into all these other rock classic rock bands and stuff and i just i never really went through that phase and because of that i was never a big fan of hair metal almost to the point where like i i kind of hate hair metal i've never really i mean obviously dr feel good um metal health um i mean you know, okay, let me let me let me say this. I'm probably gonna say Def Leppard, if you can even really consider them a hair metal band, because some people don't consider them a hair metal band. But I've never heard a Def Leppard song I didn't like. Def Leppard are badass. So let's say if you guys can categorize categorize let, actually let's look it up. Are they a hair metal band? Because to me, I think of Def Leppard as a hair metal band, but their era was kind of I don't know, man. All I know is when I hear Pour Some Sugar on Me, I mean, pff, come on. You got to do that guitar solo. Who doesn't do that guitar solo? Like, to me, I, I kind of consider them more of a of a rock band. Like, I don't really see them as, like, a, a hair metal band, really. But, like, I guess they were glam metal, so you kind of consider that... To be hair metal, I guess. So let's say Def Leppard, but a close second, which is a band I know is considered glam metal, which is hair metal, um, is uh, Quiet Riot. So I, I actually really like that uh, Metal Health record. And then let's say a close third can be uh, Motley Crue, just because just because the riff from Doctor Feelgood. That's about it. <laughs> 
I got nothing else I'm a big fan of. But uh, I'm, maybe I'm forgetting someone. But uh, I mean, the early days of uh, Pantera, maybe I could say were uh, you know I was a fan of, even though I really wasn't. I wasn't a huge fan of that. Um, yeah, let's let's say Def Leppard. Let's say Def Leppard. And the last question I have from Joe here in this batch of questions. If you could have one person on your podcast, who would it be? This is interesting because there are a lot of people I want to have on my podcast. There is... Man. As far as people who I really want to have on my show that like... I know it's never going to happen. I mean, I would love to be in a situation where I could sit down with Jerry Cantrell and do a podcast with him. But like, I would like want, I would like need someone to like vouch for me. So he wasn't, he didn't just see it as like some like random bullshit interview. You know what I mean? Like I would want to, I would basically, I'd want it to be something like he would actually like have fun doing. And, I think if I got him talking, he'd probably enjoy it because, like, I've seen so many interviews with him. And, like, he's a really weird interview because, like, he's kind of a, a monotone guy who, like, can be kind of grumpy sometimes from all accounts of what some people have said about him. So I'd want to, like, be really careful, like, ask him about, like, start asking him about stuff that, like, you know, like, I mean, I know he's a huge cat guy. So I'd be like, oh, tell me all about your cats. And, like, I'd want to ask stuff like that to kind of, like, ease him in. So he's someone I'd really love to talk to. But there's, I mean, my God, there's so many people. Um, Jerry Cantrell's one. Uh, there's a couple of random people. Like, I really want to speak with uh, Ryan McCombs from Soil and formerly of Drowning Pool. I don't know why. He's just someone I really want to have on the podcast. Because I don't, th- I've never seen him do a podcast before. So he's someone I really want on. And I think he's he's one of my favorite singers. Um, I really want to have Mark Chimani on the podcast one day. That's another pipe dream one. Um, those, those are a couple for sure. Um, I'd love to have Barry Sock on the podcast. <laughs> I think that'd be really fun. <laughs> Getting to talk with one of my, uh, one of my favorite guitar players and the owner of uh, the best beard gig company in the world. I think that would be, uh, that would be really, really fun. I mean, we can make that happen here one day. So, Joe, hopefully that answers that question. And we're going to hear from Joe again in a little bit because I have a few other questions I want to get to. But uh, there's some, definitely some great questions from Joe there. Now, the next question we have here, we're t- changing gears completely because we're going to talk a little wrestling for a minute here because my boy, Fernando from Single Wound, which is a badass band. If you guys don't know Single Wound, go check them out if you're into... Uh, the the more um, post hardcore metal style. Go check them out because they're badass. That first that first record, actually, it's funny, Fernando man. I'm I'm I'm, I'm hoping you're gonna listen to this. I was actually just rocking. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love your guys' latest stuff, obviously, but uh, I went back and listened to the first uh, EP. Um, literally, like a couple few hours ago, while I was at work, it, it popped up on my playlist and i was like yo i hadn't heard this in a while because i've been you know kind of jamming the newer stuff more so um and man what a badass badass first rec rec offering like you guys just killed it on that but uh, anyway he is also a wrestling fan and he would like to know what is my favorite pro wrestling finisher so for those of you who do not know or don't really care in professional wrestling the finishing maneuver is the last thing you do on your opponent before you pin them and win your match so it can either be like a move from the ground or a move from the top rope, some really flashy thing. It can be something really basic. It can be a submission hold. You choke them out or whatever. So I'm going to give you a couple here, Fernando, because I my all-time favorite, no questions asked, hands down, is the cutter or the RKO or the diamond cutter or the dreamer cutter, whatever you want to call it. Um or the twist of fate, if you want to call the twist of fate a cutter, normal cutter as well. The three quarter turn cutter, whatever the fuck. There's a bunch of different names. But I'm a huge fan of the cutter. That is like, I'm not so much a fan of the RKO style, 
the like the big jump because I think it's too flashy. I like a good cutter just out of nowhere. You just boom, drop them. Like I, I or like I shouldn't say out of nowhere, but like, um, I'm I'm not as much of a fan of the RKO as I am. Say like like I love Tommy Dreamer's cutter, man. If you if you've never seen Tommy Dreamer hit the cutter, it is a thing of beauty because he's just so smooth when he like Dallas really Diamond Dallas Page really like he would lock him in a headlock for a second and then drop him and he had a bunch of different ways he did it but that was kind of more his most famous way of doing it like you would know it was coming and the arcade was great because you never really know when he's gonna hit it and that's awesome but you know he does the big build up sometimes and he does the big jump and it's like I just don't believe it as much sometimes. I mean, obviously, when he hits it, literally, he just jumps up and bam. Like, that's awesome. But what I love about Tommy's man is he just... Uh, there was something I saw recently of him in, in uh, Impact. And he literally just, like, he was wrestling. The guy, like, threw him. And he, like, stopped himself out of the corner. And he came back. And he just nailed it. And I was like, yo, that is badass. And uh, fun fact, one of my favorite variations of the cutter is actually uh, a move that you will never see probably performed in the States. It is a very dangerous way to do this move. Um, But I I just, I love it so much. I think it looks so, it is such a devastating looking maneuver. But there's a reason it's devastating because it's kind of not safe. At least I've been told it's not safe by professional wrestlers that I am friends with. So, but um, it is the, uh, it's called the Black Crush. And I cannot remember the name of the gentleman who does the maneuver. He doesn't do it very much. It's really rare because it's not a very safe move to do, I guess. Um, Basically, he gets the person up for a reverse suplex. And then he drops him down into a cutter. But because there's no way for the person to like really protect themselves, it's a very dangerous way to do that move. So I get it. But I'm also a big fan of like the fireman carry, fireman's carry cutter, which Diamond Dallas Page did. Tommy Dreamer's done it that way. Uh, Test did it that way for a long time. Rest in peace, Test. Um, so yeah, hopefully that answers that question for you. And uh, uh, one other, uh, two other uh, honorable mentions I want to give because I said I'd give you a couple. Uh the Taz Mission is my favorite uh, submission uh, finishing maneuver. Or just like the sleeper hold with like the leg wrap. I just think that's badass because it's so simple. It's under, Everyone can understand that. You know what I mean? Any, everyone understands, even people who aren't fans of wrestling, everyone understands that if you're being choked out and you pass out, you lose. Like everyone gets that. You lose. You know, everyone understands that. And then uh, I'm a big fan of the elbow drop. Off the top rope. Big fan. Big, big fan. And my favorite old school professional wrestling wrestling finishing maneuver is, when I say old school, I mean because no one does it anymore. Even though I think someone should bring it back. And it really pisses me off when I hear people talk smack about it. Because it's the move, whenever someone talks shit about wrestling, uh, my my whole thing, and shout out to my boy, uh, Mr. Ryan Wood, I was like, may I show you something? And then I, I lock them in this submission maneuver and they usually start like screaming in pain in like three seconds. Because they think it's, this particular one, they think it's so dumb. And I'm like, it's legit nerve hold. You just got to know how to do it. And that is the iron claw, which was the claw across the face. Oh no, oh, he's so powerful. Obviously it looked really corny, but if you take your thumb and put it right uh, just to the upper part on the side of your temple, right like kid a corner to your eye socket, and you do your thumb on the one side and your index finger on the other side, overlapping, not overlapping, sorry, like on both sides of the same thing, and you just start squeezing as hard as you can, you're going to start being in pain. And if you add to the top of the head as well, and you just start pushing down with all your fingers, but you really put pressure on those your thumb and your pinky, that person's going to be in a lot of pain very quickly to the point where they can get a headache. I've done this before, where usually when I'm drinking, uh, and someone starts talking smack about port wrestling, I'm like, may I show you something? 
story. It's fake, right? And then I do it. And they're like, oh my god, I have a headache now. And I'm like, oh, don't talk shit. <laughs> anyway, I hope that answers your question, my man. Thank you very much for the question. Slug of water for the working man. Next question we have here is from Faith from the Punks on a Podcast, which is, uh, if you guys have not heard Punks on a Podcast, go check it out. It's one of the best podcasts out there. Faith is an absolute badass who always puts out great content and has had some killer, killer interviews. She's actually doing a fun thing now um, that she's just started recently where she's doing like new music. Every other week, she's doing a new music review. So that's really cool. So go check that out. Punks on a podcast, wherever you find your podcast, subscribe and all that fun stuff. Big shout out to Faith. Um, favorite year of your life so far? Hmm. Favorite year of my life so far? You know, hmm. that's tricky because there's two for different reasons. And. For me, um, I'm, I'm going to have to go with 2012 because in that year, in the beginning of the year, I grew a lot as a person that first month. Um, and then the next month I met Sam. <laughs> so, and then from there, our relationship blossomed and I had my first girlfriend and fell in love and... All that fun stuff. And uh, my first, like, real legit relationship girlfriend. And uh, probably going to have to go 2012. I met Sam. Fell in love. Head over heels in love and all that fun stuff. Um, So, yeah, probably going to have to go with that. And then also, um, later in the year, the seeds were planted for me to end up doing a dream job. I didn't technically do that job until the next year. But the seeds were planted in 2012 for me to do my dream job. And then also 2018 was the year I got engaged. So, yeah, let's say 2012. Let's say 2012. Yeah, let's go 2012. I like that. Let's stick with 2012. And, of course, uh, the next question I have here is for a man who, well... This is just perfect timing because my man, Mr. Jason Reese from Jaybird Digital Arts, is the man who has looked after me and all of my graphic needs for the last five years. That's right, five freaking years he has been doing things for me. And let me tell you, if you need logos or banners or any kind of social media stuff, you need t-shirts, you need album artwork, you need mailers you need brochures you need menus for your restaurant you need signs for outside of your business you want your wall painted with some kind of a specific design it relates to your business or you have any other cool graphic design ideas hit up mom man jason reese over at j bridges Arts, either via facebook or instagram under j bridges Arts or on his web j bridges Arts.com, or by email at j bird that is j-a-y-b-i-r-d dot digital dot arts at gmail.com and he'll get back to you with a free quote that's right guys a free quote for contacting you if you got something outside of the box you need some help on you have a vision for something you want i can guarantee you guys he's gonna get it because this man literally i will send him like i might as well be doing an MS paint okay like seriously i'll send him stuff like that and i'll be like i want this and he'll be like okay and he usually gets it first try that's how good this man is. So check him out right now. Sponsor of the hottest show, Mr. Jason from J. Bird Digital Arts. Jason, thank you so much for everything over the years, my man. You know how much I appreciate it and how much I appreciate you, my brother. Thank you very, very much. And Jason also has a, uh, a really fun question that I have been debating on what my answer is going to be ever since he sent it to me. And uh, that is... Mr. Reese would like to know, would you rather have a rewind button or a pause button in life? Whew. Rewind button or a pause button? That's tricky because with the rewind button, 
I wouldn't necessarily want to go back and change anything. I would just love to be able to go back and relive moments again. So if I could do if I, if I could do that, that'd be cool. But then again, the pause button, if there's something, if you just need a break for a minute and you're like, yo, I'm going to press pause on the world real quick, go have myself a nice ice cold adult beverage, kick my feet up for a couple hours, that'd be kind of cool too. But then does that pause everything? Or just like, can you like choose? I don't know. Because I wouldn't want to pause like Sam or anything. I just still want her to be able to hang out with me, you know what I mean? So... It's uh, it's tricky, but because of that, I'm going to go with a rewind. I'm, I'm going to say rewind, but I only want to relive things. I don't want to go back and change anything. That's not something I want to do. I'm not about that. But uh, being able to go back and relive fun moments of life and everything would be very, very, very fun. So let's go with that, Jason. I hope that answers your question, my man. Thank you for everything. Next couple of questions I have here is from uh, Ozzy Napalm from The Bomb, which uh, from The Bomb with Ozzy Napalm. If you guys are not familiar with The Bomb with Ozzy Napalm, you should be because he is a badass podcaster, the most explosive podcast from Kingston, Ontario, Canada. And uh, man, Ozzy Napalm, he has been killing it. With uh, his interviews, man, he's he's had some really really fun interviews. Recently, he's had a uh, stunt guy on who was on a ton of Marvel movies and stuff like that. So the the nerd in me really dug that. He's had on so many cool people. He had on uh, a producer. He's had on a writer. He had on you know an old couple of old friends of his. He had on a. Uh, a former soldier, you know, and just really, really great stuff. So big shout outs to him. And uh, we're, we're working on doing maybe some, some stuff together. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So big shout outs to Ozzy. And uh, his two questions that he has. The first one is, could Jesus microwave a burrito so hot that he himself could not eat it? <laughs> Ozzy, man, that's awesome. For those of you who don't know, that is a Simpsons quote. And uh, could could Jesus microwave a burrito so hot he himself could not eat it? Well, I mean, it's Jesus, so if anyone could figure it out, it's probably him. So let's say, sure. Now, could Jesus microwave a burrito so hot that he himself could not eat it? Probably. You ever microwaved a burrito? Bro, <laughs> you can run into some real trouble real quick with that microwave burritos in multiple different ways, not just a, uh, you know, the hotness, but also the damage later on. <laughs> I know that was a joke question, honestly, but I still wanted to make sure I mentioned it. Uh, now, his real question, if you could do any profession for a living hypothetically a master at whatever it is, what would you do? For example, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a paleontologist because dinosaurs. <laughs> That's great. That's a great question, Ozzy. Um, man, if I could do any profession for a living. So I, I would want to be a... Um, I would want to be a professional podcaster. I want to be able to do this for a living and not have any other job. It not be a side gig. It not be something I just do for fun. That would be the ultimate pipe dream. And I'd want to, my real like dream thing would be to do this podcast full time, do a couple other things have a studio, have a basically buy a building that was I would be my studio, but then also I would have other studios built and I would rent them out or just lend them out to people who need the space to help create. Basically, kind of like a maker's studio, I guess they're called. I don't want to have areas for, you know, people to be able to come and do like uh, classes with kids and stuff with, you know, uh, different 
podcast stuff and streaming stuff and video creation and things of that nature. I'd love to be able to do that one day. That's something that I'd love to be able to do. And then like my studio would be like on like the top floor. If it was like a couple story building, I'd like have my student on the top floor. That would be hotter Show Studios. And I would literally go there every day from, you know, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or whatever. And I would do this podcast. I would do other stuff. I would have a network I would want to do things with and business meetings and things of that nature and set up st- time for the for people to use the spaces and check in with them and see if they need anything and things of that nature that would be that'd be really cool that's something that uh, I love podcasting so much I love coaching people with podcasting because I have made so many mistakes that I've learned so much from over the last five years that I'm like, man, I, I, I I genuinely feel I have a lot to offer people. And, you know, it's funny. uh, I mean, I'm hoping you listen to this Ozzy, but it's funny because you and I were just talking about this earlier. The fact that, you know, um, not everyone heeds advice when you give it. Some people just want to do their thing. And that's awesome. But when I see people making mistakes I've made and I go, hey, man, like, you know, I'm just doing this out of, you know, I've made that mistake. Don't do that. And they'd kind of go, oh, well, you know, (laughs) it's happened more than once and it just it breaks my heart. So I'm like, man, I know it's not going to end well for you. And unfortunately, it never does. But if I had this, you know, big building and all this studio and all this stuff, then the people in there would uh, probably heed my warnings and listen to me more. <laughs> so, so obviously, I just want a big office. Let's be serious. I mean, come on. I just want to be able to have an office I could go to and do this and be able to, um, you know, like have a fridge that's just stocked with Diet Coke all the time and a drawer full of licorice and <laughs> have an intern to run and get me stuff. I mean, come on, that would be great. That would be great. But um, it, it's funny though, man, like I had, I was, I've been blessed with the fact that I actually got to do a dream profession for a little while. It wasn't forever. It was only for a couple of years, but I got to work in a music store and that was something I wanted to do. That was on my bucket list. And that's cool. And I also really wanted to be a school, uh, get on the school board as a janitor, which I'm currently doing. So that's been great. And I'm, I'm very blessed with that. So I wanted to be a musician when I was younger, not a rock star, but a musician. And, uh, you know, obviously that hasn't happened and that's not going to happen in my life, but, uh, could still be cool, I guess. But the main thing's the podcast, professional podcaster with a studio and all that stuff, getting paid to, a decent okay living to do podcasting full time and have a network and produce and blah, 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 blah. That would be the dream job right now for sure. The next question we have is from one of my favorite professional wrestlers in the world, Mr. John Kayan of uh, Kayan and Cable. Big shout out to them. And the question that John has here for us as I take another swig of water for the working man here. Do you speak English? <laughs> just kidding. That was a joke just for John when I had uh, Kane and Cable on the show. You know, because John's a bad guy. <laughs> I asked him a really dumb question and his response was, do you speak English? And uh, I said, yes. He said, well, then there's your answer. Um, <laughs> so I had to throw that out there. Uh, no, but seriously, he asked... If you could go back in time and see one concert or live event in history, what do you choose? Whew. Man, this is going to be a really boring answer because I already talked about it, but uh, I would give anything to be able to go back in time and see that Alice in Chains Unplugged set, MTV Unplugged set, or just any Alice in Chains concert with Lane Staley. I mean, really. I don't care what show it is, really, but uh, man, being able to see that unplugged set would be absolutely 
amazing because I just love that set so much. Um, so yeah, that would be really cool. I'd love to. I'd love to be able to see that. But anything with Lane Staley, I mean, really. Uh, as far as a wrestling event, I'd like to go see. I would have liked to have seen it happen. Uh, man, one that was really recent. I would have loved to have been there in person when uh, when Edge made his return to the Royal Rumble last year. Would have loved to have been there. Absolutely loved to have been there. I also would have, would have loved to have been there when uh, Kane and Kevin won the Tag Team Championships, but uh wasn't meant to be for me, unfortunately. I actually didn't even know you guys at the time, I don't think. So. <laughs> but big shout out to you, John. Thanks so much, my man, for... The question, I, got, I hope I get to see you guys inside a wrestling ring, kicking ass and taking names again soon. Now, the next two questions I have here is from my man, Dan. Um, Dan would like to know, do you miss the plaza? <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know, I somewhat recently left my job of five years working at uh, one of the on routes on the Highway Fall One, which is like a truck stop, a thing. I was there for five years, and he actually also recently left. And do I miss it? Um, no, I don't miss the job at all. I okay, let me rephrase that. I don't miss working for the company because, as far as I'm concerned, on routes. Are, and I hate being this negative, but like. On Roots is just a fucking evil organization now, and they're just, yeah, they don't give a shit about their employees or anything. But uh, I do miss the job sometimes, because even though I'm still in the kind of, you know, the, the, the custodial world, I was a supervisor there, and I had responsibilities that were, I was dependent on a lot for a lot of things. And I do kind of miss that aspect because I don't have that now. I didn't realize how much I'd miss that. And I really, really miss training people. I did not realize how much I loved training people until I wasn't doing it anymore. I always knew I enjoyed it, but like now especially, like, oh, man, I would love to be able to train people more. That's uh, that's something I really, really love doing. So, yeah, I kind of do miss it a little bit for, for those reasons, but not for any other reason. Obviously, the people. But I don't miss working for that company. I don't miss working for that build in that building overall. <laughs> so, then the question from Dan is uh, What series have you been into, really into recently? So, Sam and I just finished watching WandaVision, and it was great. I'm not going to discuss it here, obviously, because it is still fairly new, and I don't want to uh, to spoil it for anybody. But let's just say it is badass, and I very much enjoyed it. The, people were right to say the first couple episodes were a little slow. Um, I liked it right away because I just kind of like let it go. But we also just binged the whole thing. We just waited till it was all out and then watched it. And something else I've really been getting into recently, like the last week, is uh, I am super into right now the SCP um, stuff out there in the world. For those of you who don't know what SCP is, basically they're a series of stories and items and stuff created on the internet by people that are basically the SCP is a foundation that was formed to secure, uh, protect, and contain anonymous objects and evil objects and entities and beings and things of that nature um, to protect the world, essentially. And there's so much stuff to get into with it. And I, I thought it was really silly at first, I'm not going to lie. But what got me into it actually is uh, Mr. Brandon Bowden official voiceover of the Harder Show, voiceover guy of the Harder Show, um, he voices a character on a channel called Detective Void, which he is a detective who dives into the world of the SCP and the Foundation and their discoveries and things of that nature. And like everything has like a, a, a case number or a file number and they go into detail. And I've really enjoyed that. I started watching it to just mainly support him, but... I really enjoyed it, and I just found a podcast. Actually, big shout-outs to them. Um, I literally discovered it today. 
And I binged it at work. Like there's so much great stuff they have. It is uh, SCP Archives. And they do such an amazing job at their podcast. The voiceover stuff, the voice acting, the music. Everything is so, so good. So I am super into that right now, like big time. And uh, look, look it up, SCP. Look it up, a little more stuff. It's It's fun. They're kind of in a way like they're not creepy passes or anything um because they're like very detailed and like very real and stuff like that but they're you know people write them and they just let they let things go wild with creativity but then there's so much of them and some of them intertwine and it's like man people are just they're putting so much work in them and they're so creative so you know big big shout outs uh to everyone doing that in that world because they're just killing it but yeah big shout outs to uh detective void which is my favorite youtube one uh, not just because brandon voices it i mean that's a big part of it but also the guy the animations he does and stuff are like top notch some of the best i've ever seen so big shout out to detective void and then as well as the uh, scp archives check it out on spotify and all that i'd love to get the Someone from that on the podcast sometime to talk about it because that it just fascinates me and I'm super into it right now. Uh, the next question I have here is from my man Dylan who wants to know, and this is a really interesting question, what is something you really want to accomplish in your life that you haven't yet? I'm going to give you three things. Number one, uh, I want to be married. <laughs> I'll give you four. I want to be married to the love of my life. I already have love of my life. It was great and everything, but I want to be married. I'm sick of it. Uh, I just want to be able to call my wife. Um, I want to be a father, even though I'm a proud, proud cat dad. I want to be a human dad as well. So those are two sappy things. Um, the other two things. Oh, one of which I want to have a podcast network again that is successful and that has multiple shows that, you know, do okay. I want this podcast to get to a point where I have a little bit of a, um, it's basically, it, it's not just a passion project. It's almost like kind of becomes like a little tiny bit more than a passion project, just a little bit. Because right now, the Hot Show is just a fun passion project I do, and I love it. But it'd be cool to get to that, just that slight next level up. That would be really, really cool to have that. Um, have the network, have some, you know, some great paid sponsors. Like, I you know I've, I've had that here, but like some regular great paid sponsors. I can pay people to podcast, and I can bring those people up. That's why I want it. I don't want it for me per, per se. I want to be able to say to some people in my life that I know would podcast if there was some, they could be a little more lucrative with it just because it is so much work and they're busy. I'd say, hey, I'll pay you X amount of dollars to do a podcast, even if it's not that much. Like just having that little bit of incentive, I know for sure for some people would really push it over the edge. So that's definitely one big thing for me. Having a successful network and all that stuff would be great. That's something I really want to uh, dive into again with the knowledge I have attained from uh, my my failed network before and learning from this podcast and all those fun things. And the last thing that is something I really want to accomplish in this life that I'm definitely going to accomplish one day regardless of how it happens I want to release music into the world of some kind. Whether it is instrumental stuff, whether it's solo acoustic, whether it's a band, whatever it is, I want to be a part of it. I want to have something to do with it. I either be in the band or play an instrument on it or whatever. And I want to release it into the world. Even if it's one song, um, I'd be oh happy with that, but really the dream is to have an album. I want to be able to put an album out into the world and be like, this is my music. This is what I have to say. This is um, this is me. And 
That's a dream that I would love to be able to accomplish one day. For sure, it is a big thing I want to uh, I want to do. And you know, uh, a good friend of mine and I, who I always write with, you know, we've we've kind of sort of been plugging away at that for a while, slowly but surely. Especially over the last, I would say, month and a half to two months, we really picked it up. The music has come back to me because I kind of the music kind of left me for a little bit there. And I wasn't, didn't really have any desire to write or anything. But uh, let me tell you, I have definitely gotten it back fully. And I'm glad I have currently borrowing a guitar from that friend because I have been playing the shit out of some guitar and writing a lot of stuff. So, yeah, that's that. Hopefully that answers your question, Dylan. Thank you very much. Um, actually, sorry, one last question from Dylan here that he wants to know. Uh, he would like to know what is he, there's a reason he's asking this because he, he wants me to tell a story. Um, what is your favorite thing to snack on while you're working? Okay, so uh, full disclosure, I work with Dylan, and uh, he <laughs> um, the one day he he walks in the office and I'm chilling and I have a li- I have a licorice nib hanging out of my mouth and I'm just like eating it like without hands while I'm doing something and he's like what the hell are you doing and I'm like oh this is what I do like especially when I was at the plaza I used to like I'd be like up on a ladder like replacing ceiling so I just have like a, a licorice hanging out of my mouth <laughs> so <laughs> I love licorice so much while I'm working anything chew I, I like to chew if I could chew while doing a podcast I totally would and if I was a producer for a podcast, I would just sit here and just eat gummies and like, I don't necessarily want to like eat per se. I want the chew, but I don't like gum. It's really, str- I should say I don't like gum. I like gum, but just gum doesn't give me the same effect that like chewing a nice piece, a nice, listen, there's nothing in this world to me. Like a nice piece of like just natural black licorice, black soft licorice. That gets me excited. (laughs) If I have a signature beard oil ever in my life, it's going to be black licorice scented. Just saying. Black licorice, a little bit of of cologne spice thrown in there. That gets me going. <laughs> Shout out to you, Dylan. Hopefully that answers your questions. Uh, last couple of questions I have here are actually, once again, from Mr. Joe Loving. We come back to his last three questions to end off this Ask Hot or anything here today. Um, who has the better beard, Joe Loving or Zach Thomas? Uh, Zach Thomas, of course. Um, if you would... There's a reason he's asking me this. If you would... Could you, if you could, would you move to the U.S.? Um, no, because I do love Canada. I love being Canadian. I love living in Canada. I know I would enjoy myself, you know, in the States, in parts of the States. I know that I'd be closer to my mean beard family, which would be fucking awesome. So I could be there in person and, you know, help with more stuff. But uh, overall, I just, I love Canada. My friends are here. My family's here and all that stuff. But uh, I wouldn't, it's not like I wouldn't want to per se. Just, it's not something I'm really uh, um, wanting to do. Really, at the moment. I love Canada and everyone's here. So, yeah, that is that. But definitely parts of the U.S. for sure, for sure. And uh, the last question we have here today on this Ask Hot or Anything from Mr. Joe Loving. If you could go back in time, sorry, if you could time travel uh, or go back in time, what time period would you go to? Again, guys, this is going to be a really boring answer. I'm sorry. Um, I would go back as like a 20-year-old. To the early 90s. I'll do you one better, Joe. 
I go back to the time when you and Bischoff were <laughs> rampaging around in the 90s going to concerts and stuff all around Cincinnati. I'd go back there, like at your guys' age now, like me going back there, um, being the same age as you guys, but being me. And would just hang out and just love life and just be able to um, enjoy all these killer bands you guys got to saw kind of in their infancy, Alice in Chains and um, tons more. I can't think of anyone else off the top of my head right now. But definitely that would be the time period just because I feel like I... I feel like I belong there. You know, I feel like I should have been there for that. And, uh, you know, I would have been one of the people defending Metallica during the load era. And I would have been, um, I would have been a total grunger for sure. Cause I mean, I was in high school, so, you know, I think that'd be fun. Go back to that time period for sure. For sure. But that is going to do it for us here today on this edition of Ask Hot or Anything, the third edition of Ask Hot or Anything here on The Hotter Show. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Regardless of how you are listening, be sure to hit that subscribe button or hit that follow button. It means the world to me. Thank you so very, very much. Be sure to follow The Hotter Show on all the social medias. We have Facebook and Instagram. And if you want to discover more ways that you can listen to this podcast other than the way that you did listen to it, you can check out my solo dot to account which is a basically a one stop for all the links in regards to the show just go on solo s-o-l-o dot t-o forward slash the harder show you'll find all the links there and if uh, it so strikes you and you want to help support this podcast above just listening which either way i just appreciate you guys listening seriously it means the world to me thank you so very much you can check out the patreon Patreon.com forward slash The Hotter Show for exclusive content you won't get anywhere else, including an exclusive podcast that I do weekly now on there. Uh, You know, fun little videos and updates and things of that nature. Once the Patreon grows a little bit more, we're going to be doing live streams on there. I'm going to be doing a bunch of other fun content. You'll get discounts on merch as it becomes available, things of that nature, maybe potentially free merch if the you know community grows. So check it out, patreon.com forward slash The Harder Show. You will also get a shout out on every single week of the show, which I, of course, want to give a big shout out to my two Patreon supporters I have right now, my man, Mr. Scotty D. Scotty, thank you very much for all of your support, my man. You know, it means the world to me. Thank you so very, very much. I have known Scott for a long time. He's always been a big supporter of me and all of my uh, life endeavors. <laughs> so thank you very much, Scott, for all your support, my man. Hope you're doing well. And, of course, big shouts to my man Will from Rolls Royce for all of your support over the last uh, last few years, really. I mean, God, it's, it's been a few years now that I've been in contact with you and the guys. But uh, big shouts to Rolls Royce. If you don't know who Rolls Royce are, they are one of the premier punk bands in the entire world. Go check them out. They released something not that terribly long ago, even now. Which, of course, was Laryl, which was a badass EP. Go check it out. Will's been on the show as well a couple of times. Will, thank you very much, my man, for all of your support. And if you want personalized shoutouts like that every episode of the show, be sure to join the Patreon. You know, we have the dollar tier. If I have, like, ten people join the dollar tier, that would, like, change my life. Like, seriously, $1 a month, if 10 people did that, my goal is $30 a month. If I could get $30 a month for this podcast to just help with um, going towards things to improve it, because I is a poor boy, and uh, as much as I would love to spend my money on new equipment, things of that nature, I just, I I cannot at the moment. Um $30 $30 a month is all it would take to kind of start helping with that a little bit, which is doesn't seem like that much, but let me tell you, 30 bucks a month, would uh, that would help immensely with a couple of very specific things that I would obviously tell you guys about. And I'm sure you don't want to hear about that right now, but uh, yeah, it would help immensely. So either way, thank you very much for listening to this episode of the show. It means the world to me. Give you guys one of the patented trademarks, just kidding, not trademark, 
audio fist bumps. Boom. Thank you so very much for listening. And I will catch you next time on The Harder Show. Take it easy, guys.